Hey everybody, it's Clonoclux999, welcome to my new Let's Play of Grand Theft Auto 2 for PC. It, now, this is, this is, this game was made in 1999 by Rockstar Games, and it's the, and it's the, the fourth game in the Grand Theft Auto series. So, uh, this game, this game, uh, I will definitely say is, is a huge improvement, um, over the first one. Oh, but of course, um, Pesky options. Okay. So, in Grand Theft Auto 2, the options is kind of strange. Uh, when you, uh, when you enter the options, I would recommend you actually close the, uh, main executable to, uh, because, um, otherwise we'll kind of screw a little bit thing, things up. In the options menu, we have, uh, our language options with English and the flag I don't recognize, probably Spanish. We can also set the, te the text speed for the game. Um, here we have, here we have video options, um, I'd recommend you keep the, uh, frame rate up. Um, here we have the audio options, 3D sounds, okay. Here we have, you can set the controls and it to any, uh, anything like. And we also have, uh, network options, so, which I guess is for multiplayer, but I've never really used multiplayer on this game before. Hmm. We should have to try that and see what happens. Um, uh, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, select windowed mode and uh, have it on uh, 80 by 800 by 600. I'm going to hit GTA 2. And close the. That will uh, react to pretty much anything you do. We have windowed mode, but if I hit Alt and Enter, we can go back into full screen. And I want to do this because um, I want to be able to uh, hit go in and out of full screen anytime I want and if you don't uh, switch it to windowed mode first you won't be able to do that so that's why I want to have it on uh, and have it like that oh by the way delete this <laughs> okay um so as you can it's probably probably obvious by this point Grand Theft Auto 2 actually uses real pictures and real footage of actors which I thought was actually pretty cool um now and actually, if you have if you have not watched the uh, Grand Theft Auto 2 promotional movie, I highly recommend you check it out. Um, the clips from the intro were uh, taken from that movie. And if you want, uh, you can either watch that before or after playing this game or after this video, whatever your call. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so, but. Um, Thing about thing about this game though is that it actually does not have cutscenes while Grand Theft Auto One in London did. Um, it has um, uh, like Grand Theft Auto One in London, it was kind of like stop motion type stuff, but here there are no cutscenes, and it's kind of a shame because I wish they had um, like real footage and like voice acting and stuff like that with the cutscenes as well, but it doesn't unfortunately, which I thought would have been really cool. But then again, after doing the promotional movie, it probably kind of burned them out of it. So what do you say we finally hit play? Ah. There we go. So, um, here we actually have, um, more, uh, save files. If I look at my high, the high scores. Got a cool looking dude there. Okay. Uh, we can start in play area, but I just want to show that we actually have, um, save files like we did before. We have, um, a total of, uh, seven, well, eight technically, but zero counts. But, um, I'm actually going to rename this file to the name of our character. So, let's go do that. Couldn't fit his last name in. So let's go ahead and start with in play, start play in area one. Now, they mentioned that you probably heard something about respect, just kind of uh, look, uh, looking at things about this game, and I'll be sure to go, go over that exactly. Um, so, but first, pesky controls. Um, this game, as you can see, uses the, the, the uh, top-down 2.5D perspective that Grand Theft Auto 1 in London used for the NPCs. Okay. 
Um, so, uh, use, uh, left and right and the arrow keys to turn. Um, hold up to, up to run forward, and hold down to run backwards. And you actually run at the same speed going backwards. Well, great, that I don't want the London you actually just walk slower when going backwards. So, this guy's definitely, this guy's definitely a lot more, um, I guess, uh, ag agelic, I don't know. Um, you can use, a uh, control to, uh, punch, which will kind of just, uh, knock NPCs over. But I can, but I find that you can actually hold it. And just kind of knock them over. The NPCs actually will not fight you back. Will not fight you back in this game. They kind of just um. They kind of just knock them over and they just kind of run off. So combat system kind of got improved from the first game. But one really important control I should go over is that if you press space, you will jump. And once you get into your jumping animation, pretty much anything that can be jumped over will be bypassed. So jumping is actually pretty good in this game. And I actually like how you get close to the camera when you do. Um, now, the cool thing about this game is that I found out recently is that um, even though uh, Grand Theft Auto One technically was in 3D, it kind of used it doesn't it didn't really it wasn't necessarily like in a 3D engine. It kind of just used the trick to have like the kind of sort of illusion of 3D, not kind of like Five Nights at Freddy's did, but sort of a similar thing. Because Five Nights at Freddy's everything was pre-rendered. Will you go away? Jeez, I wish I had a gun. I'll be sure to go over him in a minute. Um, but Grand Theft Auto 2, um, I think actually really was made in a 3D game engine. So the game really is in 3D. And you can actually, like, boundary break your way through it if you want to. Um, but it still uses the same top-down view. But I definitely prefer it over the Grand Theft Auto 1. Which, by the way, if you guys are wondering why I'm doing it, and that even though I haven't finished um, the, uh, Grand Theft Auto 1 or L either London games... It's just because I haven't really been having I haven't really been having fun playing Grand Theft Auto One, so yeah, that's why I'm not do doing that. Uh, hopefully, I'll get back to it. But even though we haven't exactly completed any of those Let's Plays on the channel, um, I I I was even though I d I haven't exactly completed those Let's Plays on the channel, I still will be making note of things. Uh, uh, we saw before, and I'll get into continuity in this and this uh, after we take care of something else. But I just want to let you know that the character that we're playing as that, well, if you just wait a, a couple seconds, he'll actually start, uh, smoke like a cigarette or a cigar or something. Um, pretty much any NPC, any human thing on the field will will do that. But please tell me, okay, but please tell me that I am not the only one who thought uh, when he was doing that he was peeing. Please tell me I'm not the only one who thought he was peeing when he was actually smoking. Okay, whatever. Uh, by the way, if you do, um, if you're definitely a fan of what you're seeing right now, even though we haven't really gone too much in this, uh, if you want to play Grand Theft Auto 2, but you don't really have the PC version, this game was also released on the PlayStation 1, the Game Boy Color, and the Sega Dreamcast. Um, so if you want to check that out, um, you can. And the Dreamcast is actually something interesting that I want to bring up in a little bit. But first, what I want to do is get into these arrows that are on the screen right now. Just like in Grand Theft Auto 1, you'll, there was always an arrow that pointed to your objective. But, as you can see, now there's three arrows, and they're all different colors. What do you say we pick up this phone and see what's up? Tutorial. Hey there, stranger. Welcome to the downtown district. Stick around if you want to learn what's going down. Uh, I'm going to go out. Try a life in the big city on your own, you're worth this piece of shit. Okay, no. Let's listen to what our unknown friend has to say, because that's actually, he doesn't have a confirmed name, but he's in this place called Jesus Saves, and apparently, according to Green Theft Auto Wiki, he's just called G Unknown Friend. What do you got? Hey there, stranger. Welcome to the downtown district. Stick around if you want to learn what's going down. If you want to increase the tech speed, you can, but you can't access the uh, options in, uh... In during it, apart from the neutral areas like this one, the city is carved up between three feuding gangs: the Yak, the Zebatsu in gray, the Loonies in green, and the Yakuza in blue. You need a transportation and a weapon to get started in the city. I'm giving you both. There's the car, and there's a pistol inside. Okay, let's get in the car by pressing enter. 
You want to see where the gangs operate? Follow the big pink marker to the Zaibatsu Zone and look for men in gray suits, some of them driving distinct Z-type cars. Okay. So, uh, controlling a car is kind of, is kind of similar to, uh, just kind of walking, but you could hold, uh, you can, but you could hold, a uh, space to use the handbrake. Um, what the heck? This guy didn't explain crap, okay. Uh, Hang on just a moment. You want to work for a gang? You follow their colored markers to the phones and pick up a job. But make sure you have enough respect. I moved too close to the car. That was a problem. Respect is everything, so be careful who you kill. Spilling one gang's blood will reduce their respect for you, but increase your standing with a rival gang. Be warned, you start killing innocent people, and the cops will bust your balls. By the way, a church like this is the place to save your progress, but only after you finish a job, and only if you have $50,000. You need transportation and a weapon to get started in the city. I'm giving you both. There's the car, and there's a pistol inside. Yeah, sorry about that. I moved too close to the car, and I kind of activated that. So, now he did explain crap. Anyways, as I said, um... As I said, uh, enter the car by pressing enter. And it... So, uh, we see we get started. The NPCs will kind of run away, like, if you start are going fast next to them. So, anyways. Here we go. Welcome to Anywhere City of the United States. Uh, yeah, that's the name of the place. Um, Anywhere City. Uh, it's not really known exactly where this place is located, but... But personally, I like to believe it's like an island, kind of, uh, kind of isolated away from, uh, kind of isolated away from uh, the mainland, kind of like Hawaii is. But that's just me personally. Um, all right. You know what? I'm impatient. I'm just gonna. Uh, yeah, because that's what you do in Grand Theft Auto. You break the rules. So I guess I can explain um, the character that we're playing as. If I get out of the car, we can, uh, you didn't actually need the car to do this, but you can't. But it's, it makes things a little bit easier. Our character's name, Claude Speed, and he actually has, he has quite the personality. He 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 works for anyone who un, who will who will give him money and is ready to betray or backstab anyone who gets between him and his goals. Yeah. Uh, this character's pretty pretty ruthless compared to Bubba and uh, Rodney Mirage. Which I personally believe those are the protagonists of Grand Theft Auto 1 in London. So. Get out of the car right here. Got this phone right here. The gray markers will always point to the nearest Zaibatsu phones where jobs may be found for those with sufficient respect. Tell your friends, the Zabatsu Corporation is interested in offering contract work to anyone prepared to keep the loony population to a minimum. The next stop is Looney Land, home to the guys in bright green night dresses. Their cars are obvious from the smiling faces on top. Okay, okay. You can press tab to uh, honk the corn horn, by the way. Oh, also, if you're not in the car, listen. Okay, enough of that. Um, yeah, you can burp and fart if you're not in the car. Like, no! <sighs> Claude. There you go. Uh, you can also jump over the cars, which is really nice. Something, a feature that I highly welcome from Grand Theft Auto 1 in London. I know, 
Grand Theft Auto London was an expansion for uh, Grand Theft Auto Auto 1, but I do personally consider it its own game. That's just me personally. Hey, did the, does the horn sound different? Okay, I guess the horn kind of sounds different depending on what kind of car you're in. Because what kind of car is this one? Schmid, okay. Now, I'm not really going to talk about the continuity of Grand Theft Auto as of right now. Um, usually, sorry, uh, usually uh, the continuity is something I talk about right away whenever we start our, the game, start um, a new Grand Theft Auto game. But I want to talk about talk about that in a, a little bit later because when this game takes place is actually a little bit ambiguous. I like that ice cream truck. Oh crap! Actually, um, no, jeez, why do they keep running right in front of the cars? I know my way around this city pretty well. I will say, I think I know around it around a little bit better than the three places in a. Grand Theft Auto 1. Speaking of which, by the way, if you want to know how many levels this game has, um, Grand Theft Auto 1 had 6, London 1969 had 4, London 1961 only had 1. This game, there's only 3 levels, so... Yeah, but I will say the levels do have a lot of content to them. Whoop whoop! The green markers always point to the nearest loony jobs where, where, where jobs may be found, just so long as you have the respect. Woohoo! We loonies respect people who like killing Yakuza poops. Now let's visit the Yakuza territory. These fellows dress sharp in the latest blue collection from Milane. They, and they don't mess around, so be cool. They He's not wrong about that, because there's actually some stuff about the Yakuza that I'd like to talk about in, uh, in a little bit. You can listen to the radio. I guess I'll turn the volume up so you guys can listen to the radio. Although I can't, probably can't hear it over the sound of the sound of the tires. The blue markers are always point to the nearest Yakuza phones where man or jobs are made available for anyone with enough respect. That was a terrible Japanese accent. You want Yakuza respect? You better start killing Zaibatsu. Simple. The reasons you will learn. Now you can see the, how the city sliced. Follow the pink, big pink marker back to me. I got a little something for you. Okay, so we did, uh, that, um, these people are kind of everywhere, um, or, wow, we just started and we've already run over three people, uh, so I guess I can explain something a little bit, something important about the Yakuza, now that we, uh, know, now that they know you're here. If you remember, uh, the Yakuza were a gang, um, found in San Andreas in Grand Theft Auto 1, they were... They were a rival gang of El Burro's game. So, um, now I get, so I'll get, in, I'll talk about this in a little bit, in a little bit, because they're, because they're kind of the biggest, because the Yakuza have actually appeared in quite a few Grand Theft Auto games. Okay, now we're back here. I don't know much, but I taught you all I know. Here's my SUZ machine gun, plus a special token for your trouble. So we grab this. We have an S Uzi machine gun. It differs in virtually no way from the regular machine guns from Grand Theft Auto 1. But he also grabbed and gave us this. This is a GTA 2 token. 
It didn't give us any money, but I'll be sure to explain what these do. Um, if I look up in their corner, you can see we have um, uh, our money up there. He actually gave us $20,000 for completing the tutorial. Now, uh, this act, even though this technically does not count as a job, I, de I definitely would recommend you uh, tackle this as the last job, or just something as something you should do if you get a high multiplier. I'll be sure to, to explain that as a feature return from Grand Theft One. Um, or if you're going for a hundred percent, I guess. Um, so if I press uh, F6, I can pause the game. Target score, 1 million. Yakuza jobs pass, 0 of 7. Zaibutsu jobs pass, 0 of 7. Looney jobs pass, 0 of 7. Total jobs pass, 0 of 22. Kill frenzies pass, 0 of 20. GTA 2 collected, 1 of 50. Okay. So basically, um, throughout the, uh, throughout anywhere, the downtown district of anywhere city, there are these, there are 50 of these GTA 2 tokens. Uh, what is your reward for collecting all 50 of them? Simple. You will earn, as the Yakuza boss says. Um, anyways, before I actually, um, start explaining more of the mechanics of Grand Theft Auto 2, I want to, well, go a little bit more in-depth about what the, about what the, uh, what is the, uh, the story of Grand Theft Auto, sort of. Okay, so, when, now, Grand Theft Auto 1 took place in, presumably, 1997. I've seen, a some, a source claim it to be in 1996, but I think in 1997 does make a little bit more sense, so I personally think it takes place then. I don't know what this guy is doing. Um, Grand Theft Auto London 1969, um, as you would expect, took place in 1969. Grand Theft Auto London 1961 took place in 1961. Uh, so this current timeline is Grand Theft Auto London 1961 in 1961, Grand Theft Auto London 1969 in 1969, and Grand Theft Auto 1 in 1997. But when does Grand Theft Auto 2 take place? Well, like I said, when it takes place is actually kind of ambiguous. Um, there's a source that it states it's in the it, it takes place in the far future, sort of. But it also says a source that states that it takes place in three weeks into the future, which presumably means three weeks after you know the initial release date of this day. So this, uh, there's evidence that, that, that suggests that this game ta takes place either in 1999 or in 2013. Personally, I believe it takes place in 1999. Like, I'll acknowledge the 2013 stuff, um, but but I personally think, t think it takes place in 99. Um, even though the cars do look kind of futuristic, I don't really think the, I think the city as a whole is futuristic enough where it could presumably takes pla take place... Um, uh, 14 years in the future, so that's my reasoning there. So, now I can explain what I was talking about the Yakuza a second ago. Um, the Yakuza were a gang that appeared in Grand Theft Auto 1 in San Andreas, and they were a rival gang of El Burro. Um, so, so here's my theory as to what happened to him. If this game takes place in, in 1999, in the two-year interval that... Uh, that followed the games. The Yakuza had, well, to be fair, actually, to be fair, it could actually um, take place in either in 19, okay. If this game either takes place in 1999 or 2013, it could be that in the two year or 14 year, or, yeah, 14 year, or, the two year or 16 year interval between games that the Yakuza had, had left, um, San Andreas and came here to Anywhere City. Um, so, that's kind of my assumption, because the boss of, uh, the boss of the Yakuza in Grand Theft Auto 1 isn't explicitly said, but in, but in this game, and we do know who the leader is, I'm not going to spoil it quite yet, because we haven't exactly seen it yet, so, so, yeah. Now, if I can get into more of the gameplay mechanics, our unknown friend had given us a pistol and a machine gun. If I press X, I can cycle, we can cycle through our weapons forward, and if I press Z, we can cycle through our weapons backwards. Um, and you can pre and, and press Control to fire your weapon. Okay. Uh, like I s and just like in the first three games, you can, just like in the last three games, you can uh, you can uh, hear the police. Even I don't. But the, you don't really hear them quite as much as you do in, uh, in, um, first game. Now, if I pull out my pistol, what do you do with the pistol? Well, I... 
Come on! There you go, that's why, what you're supposed to do with them. You can also use your machine gun, but the machine gun actually got a little bit nerfed from Grand Theft Auto 1. Um, actually, hold on, let me just, let me just run away a little bit. Uh, the machine gun kind of got nerfed from Grand Theft Auto 1, because while the pistol, um, will pretty much kill anybody instantly, uh, the machine gun actually requires two bullets in order to, uh, to, um, kill off one person. So, um, so, yeah, I can see there's a GTA 2 token up there. Um, so, yeah, the machine gun only does half as damage, but it, but it fires faster, so it did get a little bit nerfed from Grand Theft Auto 1, which... I guess I kind of I didn't do it like that. I mean, if you shoot five bullets, then that counts as only using using up one ammo. So there we go, and I'll explain what happened there with the police in a second. But I want to uh, uh, show you what oh you what else you can do with this gun. It takes more ammo to uh, do this in, but but you can the car's gone. Well, um, I can show you that, you know, what, okay, I can exactly show you what, oh, uh, what this game, uh, what the name of the game is. You might know that, the ga that this game is called, uh, Grand Theft Auto, and well, uh, it's not explicitly correct. The crime known as Grand Theft Auto is by stealing a car that is currently unoccupied and parked. When you steal a car that's some, that by just pulling the person out by pressing enter is carjacking. I shall demonstrate here. Oh, hey, you jerk. You jerk. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Because I can shoot my gun, and I can blow up the cars. Now, you can see that it's causing the police to come after us. The police will come after you if you see if you, they see you, um... Uh... You can see the, the uh, cop... The car is, uh, blowing up the car will pretty much make the, like, at least one police head appear, um, at the top of the screen. Um, and, and, uh, but, if the more people, and also if you kill, like, a few people, but the peop but the cops do function actually a lot more intelligently than they did in the first game. And if you, uh, kill more people or blow up more, they actually will, um, will, um, uh, start to come after you more. And if the police, like, see you, if there's, like, a, like, a police car there, and they see you shoot a gun, in the first game it was just if you shot the police car, which was kind of there, but if they see you, like, shoot the gun, then they're gonna come after you. Or if you, like, steal one of the cars. Now, another really important mention to do, ooh, mention, engine, is that in Grand Theft Auto 1, the police were kind of hard to, uh, shake off, because they kind of stayed on your, on your tail no matter what until you went into a spray shop. Um... And, uh, and they kind of stayed in your tail pretty much in, until you went into a spray shop. In this game, however, if you have, it only works if you have one police head up there. If you um, kind of go into an area where the road is just kind of off screen completely, uh, if you just wait a little bit, the police will actually disappear because you hid and they stopped looking for you. So that's kind of nice. But, once you get more or than one police head after you, just a fair warning, they're not gonna go away. So, you, you gotta, you, so if you wanna get them away, now you had to go into a spray shop. Which I will demonstrate. So, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to, uh, jump into one of these cars. Oh crap, here they come. I'm gonna jump into this car right here. I'm going to uh, drive over here. Pretty sure it's over here. Yep, right here. Max, Max Paint. There you go. Nice color. That's five thousand dollars. Okay. So it changes the color of your car and also the license plate. And uh, basically, that'll shake even if there you have four police cars surrounding you. If you go into this police, uh, police. The end of the spray shop. They somehow think it's a completely different car, and they and they will uh, stop coming after you. Uh, Mac, but the spray shops are actually bundled together with all these different things, um, and you'll find a few of these around the cities. We have um, Smith and Heston's uh, Red Army Surplus, Max Paints, and Hell Oil. 
Um, basically what this does, um, we're actually in the Yakuza territory, because you can see some of the Yakuza down there. Um, basically, let's see, um, now I don't have the money for all these, so, so I'll just be sure to explain, like, what you do. You ain't got enough cash, you need $25,000. What this thing will do is basically, it will put a machine gun on your car, and it will fire from both sides. And you can hold control to uh, shoot uh, a sort of pseudo gun while you're driving, so that's kind of nice. Oh, you want to pick that up? This right here is a bomb shot. The vehicle's been rigged. That's $5,000. Basically, what happens is that if they put a bomb in it, uh, you can actually put, press uh, Control or X and Y or X and Z if you want to uh, if you want to um, cycle through this to make sure you don't accidentally set it up. But whenever you want to set it up, just press Control. Makes a pretty big explosion. Oh crap! Um, it makes a pretty big explosion, but something really cool about this game is that whenever a car explodes, it actually sends out a shockwave that'll actually make you lose a tiny bit of health, but it'll also put you push you back a little bit. So, yeah, they're getting really a, a lot better with the physics in this game, and I'll be sure to go over these guys in a little bit because they're getting really obnoxious. Oh my goodness. I don't want to go into the spray shop again because... I don't want to go into the spray... Actually, I don't think I'll have enough money anyway, so I think I'll just grab another car and head into the spray shop again just to get the police off my tail. Actually... But just stand around here, or they'll, pro they'll probably, um... Yeah, I really would I recommend you avoid uh, police confrontation if you can. Um, I'll be sure to go over the stuff in the corner a little, in a little bit. Because uh, that stuff is actually pretty important. Okay, we're good now. Let's get into this taxi right here because, uh... Oops, didn't mean to do that. So if I head into Hell Oil... Oh, okay, you need 10000 The vehicle's been rigged. That's $10,000. Basically what this does is you press... You, we have this thing up in the corner. If you press Control... You can let down these little, um, splooshes of oil, and then it'll actually make the car slip around. And, uh, it can make for some pretty, uh, humorous slapstick results. <laughs> so, yeah, personally find it to be pretty funny. Um. So, yeah, that's pretty much all there is. Uh, but I guess now I can, uh... Now that we've gone over, like, the garages here, I can explain something. If I get into this taxi right here, just wait a second. Check it out. That person actually got into the car with us. That This is basically the game where taxi missions were, were introduced. And if you look in the, in the, up in the corner, you can actually see that our, our score is actually going up a little bit. Um, basically, these are taxi missions. Basically, if you get into a taxi and then just kind of drive near some pedestrians, they'll actually get into the car. And as you, you are driving, um, they will uh, you will get uh, more uh, money for it. It's it can be a good way to uh, slowly get to the target score if you want if you really that's what you're trying to do not necessarily trying to go for 100 percent and when you stop they'll actually get out and well another person will get back in next I want to go over this uh this is a bus I haven't really gone and done this before but if I get in it a bus and if I go next to this bus stop. Oh yeah, check it out. They all get into the bus. Hmm. I haven't exactly done this before, so I'm not exactly 100% sure how it works. But the people in the bus, uh, I think when you get the when you get to the next bus stop, you'll get um. Uh, you'll probably get something. Uh, if I get off right here. Huh. Are the people gonna get out? Yeah, according to Grand Theft Auto Wiki, there doesn't really seem to be anything of note with these buses. They're, which is kind of odd because, uh, um, because of the taxis. Okay, 
Now I should probably really explain what, what was up with those with those two uh, characters. Okay, as you run around the city, you might as you run around the city, you might uh, f uh, spot some people doing some various criminal activities. If you see a guy in like a green shirt and running into a car, those are carjackers. Usually they'll go into the they'll go into the road and steal a car. So yeah, they're kind of stealing your mojo. Um, I guess Grand Theft Auto 2 does take place in the future. Okay, I don't know. Um, the the guys in the um, in the red shirt with like the white sleeves, those are muggers. Basically, they're gonna come. They're gonna run up to you, and even if you're armed with like a freaking flamethrower, they're still gonna they're still going to. Uh, to, um, they're still going to, uh, try to rob you, and, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> okay, well, there's an example of the carjacker, um, so, yeah, uh, is there anything else I should explain? Oh, yes, um, those numbers up in the corner, um, so, those hearts are quite obviously our money, so, kind of, I run, okay, no, this is not Kid Icarus, um, I just kind of like making that joke, um, are th those hearts are our health. In Grand Theft Auto 1, uh, pretty much, unless you had armor, you, you would get to go down pretty much realistically uh, from one bullet. So, um, yeah, so those, that health is definitely welcome because you can, uh, can take a few uh, more heads. It's not that much health, though, but there is a way around that, and I'll be, go be sure to go over that. Um, above those hearts is our money, as you can see by the dollar symbol. Um, you're basically, your goal here in the downtown district is just like in Grand Theft Auto 1 in London, you have a target score to reach. Um, and once you reach the target score, you can reach the, you can reach the, you can leave the district and head into the next level. Um, in this game, however, uh, let's see. In this game, however, um, as you saw before, money actually does, does, a. Uh, uh, play a bit of a higher role in this, not only because of the garages and stuff like that, and just kind of, you know, very spending money and stuff like that. Right here, probably one of the best additions to uh, the Grand Theft Auto series, Jesus Saves. If you look at it flashing, you could say, you save, which is kind of funny. So I don't really think this is a real, a real church, because, uh, because of that's considering it's what our friend is using, and he's giving us guns. So, yeah, some church. Uh, if I head inside... Get lost, you bum! It costs fifty thousand dollars and safe to say to play here. Okay, if I hit uh, F seven, you can actually re you can actually um replay the last uh, line of dialogue. Uh, instead, if I hit um, oops, I uh, sorry. Um, actually, um, F eight will actually bring up the options at any time, but it doesn't really uh change much. Um, if I hit F nine, that'll uh. I'll show you our current location. We're in training mission, even though we're kind of in Avalon right now. F10, F11, F12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They don't really seem to do anything. Um, if you hit escape, you can uh, actually um, uh, hit... You can actually hit enter to uh, quit the game. Uh, now, if those that red... That green number next to our health is, um, our lives. Basically, whenever you die, you will be, um, you will be, um, sent to the, you will lose a life. And if I go over here and, uh, grab this rocket launcher, you can get this at any time whenever you restart. And I kind of just, uh, demonstrate, uh, what it's like to die. And yeah, I'm not gonna delay. It sounds like Patrick Star. Um, it will take. It will send you to the nearest hospital. Not only will you lose a life, uh, you won't lose any money. Here's some true Grand Theft Auto, by the way. Okay, actually, did the name of the game. Um, not only will you lose a life, if, and if you lose all your lives, you will get a game over. Uh, you all your weapons will also be taken from you. Um, so you gotta go and get them again. Um. Now, if I want to mention something right here, right here, this is that TV van right here that has, like, the stinger. That satellite dish up there basically will always point to Jesus save, so if you're kind of lost and don't know where, where the save is, um, you can, uh, you can, uh, use the TV vans to uh, figure out your way back. Now, that red number next to our money, that is our multiplier. Just like in Grand Theft Auto, Auto 1 in London, our multiplier is an essence if you're trying to get to the, reach the target score. You, 
you um basically whenever you complete a job uh no matter which game it is your multiplier will go up by one however um there is something you should really keep in mind when it comes to uh the multiplier and i'm going to find a police car to demonstrate that You know, I was thinking maybe making evol- oh, there's one. Making evolution of Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. Ram its car. When you are busted, you'll be taken to the nearest police station. You can get out of the car at any time, but they'll, like, shove you out of the police car. And not- and you will also lose all your- all your weapons when you're busted, but you- but you won't- but you won't lose a life. Instead, you'll actually lose half your multiplier. That's why it's, a, it's an idea to avoid police confrontation any time, any way you can if you're trying to get to the target score. Because you, because if you get caught by the police, you're going to lose a lot of your multiplier, and it's going to make getting, getting to the target score a lot more annoying. Now, I want to go over the saving a little bit. One, I really do think the saving is an extremely welcome feature to the Grand Theft Auto series, because as you can actually save in the middle of any, if you're just trying to like go for 100% or whatever, and just trying to get to the target score. But if you are trying to get to the target score, people have said that it is kind of annoying, they don't like having to spend and money t uh, on having a save. And to an extent, I agree, but... I really do think that that having to pay for your, uh, for your, because like saving is free in later Grand Theft Auto games, but I do like how how in this game you actually have to pay in order to save your game, because because you're trying to let me go ahead and grab this. This basically just makes it so people don't run. Um. Uh. Be, uh I do because like if you're trying. It actually just makes like trying to get to the target score a little bit tighter because you, as you you want to get to the target score, but at the same time you don't want to like um have something happen that like you like lose your weapons or a multiplier, and you kind of just want to uh, get to the uh, want to save in the middle of it to ensure that doesn't happen. Um, personally, I like that you have to uh, spend pay to save your game because it kind of makes doing that a little bit tighter because like you're and like you're trying to. Uh, because like you, you're trying to um, get to the get to the target target score and just well, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Okay, I have really I have a lot of trouble talking and I have trouble conveying my speech into words. Okay, um, so that so that is that. But you can only save if you're not in the middle of a job. You know what? I don't like this mugger. I must be the most notorious criminal in anywhere city if the if the cops are seeing me seeing somebody mugging me. And and not even doing anything about it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this. Use this. Use the machine gun to kill 40 people in 120 seconds. The kill frenzies return from a uh, from a Grand Theft Auto one, but instead of uh, having to uh, re to uh, reach like a a little target score um, to get the at the, the to get the reward for it, instead what you actually have to do. Is you just, is you have to fulfill a certain goal in order to um, oh yeah falling was a little bit of help there to fulfill a certain goal to um, to uh, pass the kill frenzy. Um, in this case, we just in this case we have to uh, we have to uh, kill a total of four of forty people. Um, kind of terrible, but there are times where you, or you can where you have to use like a rocket launcher to destroy vehicles, or sometimes when you have to use like a use like a, a, a silenced machine gun to. Uh, to kill um cops but as you can see right here by doing the kill frenzy the cops are going to be uh, going to be on your ass like a pretty good chunk of the way uh they're not exact if you have a low wanted level they're not exactly faster than you um we have, oh man not much more left to go And, oh, jeez. Okay. Well, by uh, fulfilling the kill frenzy, you you will not only get a little bit of cash, but you will also that well that that's supposed to shake the cops off your ass. But I think because they were already after me and like didn't do anything. Oh, yeah, it's because I was shoot. It was shoot. I was shooting when the thing ended, and it still counted as them coming after me. So yeah, but usually a kill frenzy will get the cops off your ass if they are on your ass. So. So um yeah. But not only did we get um, 
a little bit of money from that. We also got, um, we also got, um, an extra life from that. Whenever you do a kill frenzy, you'll get an extra life. Um, you can no longer find, uh, like, the crates aren't in this game anymore. Uh, you can no longer find uh, extra lives just, uh, kind of sitting around anymore. Now they're all just, um, getting, uh, get, getting from the kill frenzies. So, yeah. So now if I pause, um, we have a 1 of 20, 1 of 50, yeah. But it, hopefully that'll do it for all the explaining I have to do, so I guess uh, now I will go over one last thing. My plan for this LP. Like I said, there are three levels in this game. There are 20 kill frenzies in all, 50 GTA tokens in all, and 22 missions in total in all three levels. So, yeah, this game is definitely a lot uh, more um, fixed with the uh, compared to the last two games. My What my plan is, is I want to... I want to go for a 100% run in this game. And, um... I want to reach the target sword, but I want to um, do all seven of the Zabatsu missions, then do all seven of the Yakuza missions, then all seven of the Looney missions. Then after that, we'll we'll end and, and the job after that. We'll take care of the uh, we'll take care of the um, GTA two tokens, and then we'll take care of the uh, of the kill frenzies, and then after that, um, we'll head on to the next level. So that's my plan. Will you go away, jeez? You know what? Is that rocket launcher still there? But yeah, that's my plan for. Um, oh, it's not here anymore. Good. Um, that's my plan for the uh, for um, this game. But by the way, um, I actually would uh, n not recommend playing the uh, PlayStation One version of this game. It's not that that version's bad. It's just the fact that the kind of the collectibles are kind of scarce in that in that version. I don't really know why. I'll explain what I mean when I actually do do the LP of that game. So, yeah. Anyways, um, let's go ahead and exit the game right here. Uh. Okay, now there are specific rewards for basically doing all that, for beating all the missions, all the kill friends, getting all the GTA 2 tokens. There actually are specific rewards for that, because like in Grand Theft Auto 1, if you got all the, if you did all the missions, uh, all in one sitting, nothing really happens. So, but in this game, something you actually are get are a little, uh, rewarded a little bit from it. But anyways, guys, I think I have rambled on a little bit. My mouth is actually getting really wet, and and I really want something to drink. So, I believe that's going to do it for this first episode of Grand Theft Auto 2. Next time on Grand Theft Auto 2, we are, go we are going to get started on the Zaibatsu missions. And just all around see what working for these guys is like. So, see you guys then.